<laughs> oh, I, I always seem to laugh when I start these things because I'm kind of trying to de-stress. It's like I always start these things out tense and nervous and then uh, get used to them. So, <laughs> well, what can I say? But hi there. Welcome once again to Cast Iron Wednesday. It is Wednesday. It is December 30th. The last Wednesday of 2020, the next to last day of 2020. Thank goodness. Uh, yeah, it's been a really fun year for everyone. Not all of it has been bad, but uh, yeah, uh, we'll get into that some other time. Um, <clears throat> actually, because as you know, tomorrow night is uh, New Year's Eve. That's why I was hoping... <laughs> Uh, at least up until last week, I was hoping up to uh, do a traditional New Year's Eve uh, dish tonight, such as, oh, Hop and John, which I've talked about before. I mean, a lot of people are going to be making that dish of uh, black-eyed peas, uh, ham hocks, collard greens, and cornbread uh, by uh, Friday, and that's fine. I'm going to be making a dish of that as well. Just not tonight, because something else turned up. Um, as it mentioned in the uh, title of this video here, we are doing something a little different. That's because last week, as you know, for uh, Christmas Eve, I made a uh, pork pie, and that included uh, some pulled pork. I went out to the butchers on uh, third, well, not butchers, it's more like a uh, Hispanic uh, meat market in, in my area, which has, a pretty, which has a really good price on a lot of meat, especially pork, and uh, they were, it was early in the morning, and they were laying out the pork shoulders in their uh, meat section. And it just so happens that I saw the uh, guy there. I really couldn't call him the butcher, but uh, whoever was stalking it, uh, in addition to all those pork shoulders, he uh, happened to put out a small pig head. And I was very surprised to see that. I realized that was something I had to grab right away because you don't expect to see a pig head uh, out, out at your uh, typical supermarket. And it turned out that uh, it wasn't even a really large pig head. It was probably a, it was a smaller pig head. So most likely it was like a piglet or a young pig, um, which is good because that means it was, well, more compact and easier to carry. And so, of course, I had to get that. And that also meant I had to make it tonight. If for no other reason that, well, pig heads, well, yeah, you have to say it. It's uh, so unusual that it tends to, give a lot of people the creeps, including a couple of people who are close to me, like maybe somebody who I might be living with right now. <clears throat> yes. Gross. <laughs> yeah. So it, I was thinking of uh, putting that on hold and uh, making Hop and John tonight, but no, I figured it would be better to make that as quickly as possible. Besides, it's something unusual, so why not... Uh, see something a little bit out of the ordinary, especially when it's actually really not that hard to do. And it is worth doing. Now, here's the thing. People are grossed out because it's a pig head. However, as anybody who has had uh, anything like what we're making tonight, which would be known as brawn or hog head cheese, uh, will tell you the head is, pro is pro one of the best uh, cuts of meat on the entire pig. It's tender. It's delicious. It's uh, very, very, yeah, it falls apart, especially when you cook it for a long time. And it is well worth making the effort to do it because, as I said, it's really not that hard. It just takes a lot of patience. I mean, I've been uh, boiling this all afternoon, for instance. Um, around lunchtime today, in fact, I prepared the pig head by cutting it apart. That was my first time cutting apart a pig head, and yeah, that was a bit of an adventure in itself. Um, the link to that, of course, again, is in the title of this video, I mean, or description. I mean, you saw it's the one that goes to the Facebook Live where I actually cut that pig head up and started boiling it, and that's where it is right now. I should apologize <clears throat> for the sound quality of this afternoon. That was embarrassing. As it turns out, the microphone on my phone is, well, going bad. And I've actually used a uh, plug-in mic uh, to uh, compensate for that, but for some reason it wasn't working this afternoon. I don't, and I'm still trying to find out why. So as a result, 
<laughs> um, the sound quality of that was awful, and I really hope people were able to understand what I was doing. Of course, you were certainly able to see me using that uh, saw to cut open to uh, cut a pig head open. And of course, it had to be cut open so that we could expose the innards uh, <clears throat> and uh, boil them all up, which again, they are all here in this pot. Um, also, like I said, and then I'll shut up and uh, say hi to all you folks in the comments. Also, one other thing is, yes, again, a, a pig head, a lot of people find this gross and, it, uh, gr and uh, people may find this shocking. And to which I can only say, if you don't want to watch this video, you don't have to. I am not forcing anyone one to watch it. Um, so if you feel upset by that, again, please, you don't have to watch. I'm not going to be upset. Um, <clears throat> on the other hand, folks who uh, like taking chances or seeing something a little different, well, I hope you have already seen something a little different. <laughs> so... Hello, Jessica T. Hello, Bookworm73. I'm, I mean, you guys are showing up here every week. And again, I very much appreciate that. I'm glad people seem to like this well enough to keep coming back. Uh, head cheese is the bomb. Marty Vestal is digging with Marty. And oh, yeah, no, believe me. When I, when I, the lap, okay. I have me I've tried hog head cheese from a uh, couple of uh, really good meat markets, and it really didn't appeal to me that much. But then again, I didn't make it myself that time. And the spices I used, uh, okay, let me try this. Uh, I made a hog head cheese video on my YouTube channel a couple of years ago, and if you haven't watched it yet, you can just look on my uh, YouTube channel, and you'll be able to see it. Head cheese uh, with a cast iron pig mold. Oh, by the way, here it is. I'll uh, show that in close up a little later. Anyway, um, <clears throat> that was really a learning experience for me, one that I hope to, definitely am taking to heart tonight because the first time when I first put that all together, it tasted pretty good. Then I decided to go overboard with the spices, threw in a whole bunch of additional spices, and man, did that ever turn out fantastic. Oh, let me tell you. Mm. Really, when I'm done mixing the spices in this, I may may not even go for the uh, refrigerated head cheese. I might just eat the pork out of the bowl the way it is. I mean, it really was that good, and I'm anticipating it to be that good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, mine is more like a pate. Oh, Julia LeBlanc. I'm guessing you must probably put yours in a blender or food processor or something. Yeah, mine is not quite that fine. I suppose I could, but I think I've had one food processor adventure on this uh, YouTube live, and I'm not going to go for another one for a little while yet. I'll just go with what I what I did last time, because it still turned out uh, quite good. <laughs> uh, you can use a pork roast instead of the head. Yes, you can. You can use any cut of pork, really, like a pork shoulder, for instance. You know, you just cook, you just boil it until it falls apart, and you can do the exact same thing. I would, I'm, in fact, I really should do that the next time I make a pulled pork, because these spices, this combination made that pork oh, out of this world. Um, and I'm here this week, not sure about this recipe. <laughs> well, okay, again, the gross stuff happened earlier this afternoon during the YouTube Live. What we have now, quite simply, is meat. I've been boiling this meat for about, um, oh, maybe about five to six hours now. Um, so it should certainly be tender enough to fall apart. And let's get a close-up of it. It's not a whole pig. I mean, it's not a whole pig head anymore because it's been cut up. So. Da -da -da. As you can see, it's really no more than just meat. It's been, as I said, it's been uh, simmering and boiling in this large enameled cast iron pot now for about six hours or so. Um, and what I have to do now is drain it and then uh, just simply sort through it because that's the uh, other fun part is that essentially you have to pick out every bit of meat that's, that's actually edible and the rest will be discarded. So um, <clears throat> that's what we're going to do here. Um, and we're going to drain it. Uh, but I have to save this uh, cooking liquid here because we're going to reduce that. That is uh, going to give us some extra fat to help bind it all together. 
Um, oh, you know, yeah, this, um, I could describe a couple of the things we're seeing here, but no, I really don't want to go out of my way. But, uh, oh, yeah, as somebody, Julie LeBlanc said, it's coarse grind. Yes. So, <laughs> and Les Bennett Jr., first cast iron live stream I've been able to attend. Well, welcome. And we're having what I hope is an interesting one tonight. So, uh, like I said, this is really no more than just boiling meat. Yes, it's a cut-up pig head, but really, what's the difference, be be especially since I also threw in a couple of ham hocks in this to help uh, produce some more uh, gelatin and fat? And really, what's the difference between a pig head and a ham hock? Well, a ham hock isn't a pig head. <laughs> yeah, but that's really about the only difference. So, having said that, let's uh, get started and see what we can do. All right. Here's, this is the, always the fun part, namely setting this in, in such a fashion. Okay, we can move this a little closer, put this on this side, and that may work. There we go. All right, so now from here, all right, I'm going to put two bowls here. One is going to be for the meat, and one is going to be for the uh, discarded stuff. So I'm actually going to strain this twice. The first one is going to be the really fun one. And here's where I hope I don't uh, spill it all over the place. Nice and careful here. Come on, here it comes. Let's do this right. Ugh. There we go, I was expecting that. Ugh. That wasn't so bad. Phew. All right, now that we've done that part, uh, let's fish these parts out. Yes. And there we go. That's the worst of it. Drip, drip, drip. And if I had another hand, I might be able to put the bowl under this, but I'm not going to ask somebody for help. So uh, let's just move that over here quickly. There we go. Uh. All right, now as for the rest of this, let me see. Uh, I can see enamel pot, no metal. Got a couple of things in here that I still have to get rid of. And then after that, I will strain this back again. So let's do this as quickly as we can. Let's see, move this liquid out of reach. Oh, and by the way, the cats are are in the bedroom this time, so there's not going to be any disruption from the cats. <laughs> All right, so let's do this right. There we go. Now that we've done that, let's get back to here and do a second straining. Now, from here, the pot, I have to turn this up nice and hot, high, and bring this to a boil so that we can uh, reduce this somewhat and make this uh, liquid nice and thick. And from here, I'm going to have to let this cool off a little bit because I'm going to have to sort through this. If I do it with my hands right now, well, let me try that again. And now, I'm going to have to let this cool off a little bit because, you know, if I sort through this with my hands, 
Well, I'm probably gonna burn my hands. So, do my best to pull this off a little bit. Okay, keep this out of the way right now. And while this is cooling off, let's um, do a couple of things, like mention, like talk about casting for a little bit. As I mentioned here, I'm going to be using a uh, pig head mold for this. Uh, yeah, I, you, I'm sure you have seen these things, um, at least on the internet, sometimes on eBay, maybe even on, um, on uh, antique stores. Um, and really, it's like a lot of people see these things and they really don't know what they are. Uh, this was, in fact, made especially as a mold for head cheese or fromage de tete or other kinds of uh, meats or even pastries or other things they could pack into this. Um, I have seen uh, instances where these, these kind of molds actually probably date back to, if not medieval times, at least... Uh, Oh, the Elizabethan era of uh, England and France and the like. However, this is almost certainly new. Um, it's, it's most likely made by Lodge Cast Iron. The, my understanding is uh, just that, that it's been asked who might have manufactured this, and uh, apparently the most likely culprit is, in fact, Lodge. Um, while this does... Um, some of these do have a USA mark on the forehead, um, but those do not seem to be very common, and I don't think they sold very well when they marked it with a USA. So since then, um, the majority of these have not had that kind of a mark on them, so there's no real maker's mark on it, but it's, uh, we can uh, pretty much safely assume this was, in fact, made by Lodge probably, say, during the uh, 1960s or so, because it's been hinted on uh, the Lodge Cast Iron users groups that uh, this is actually not very old, uh, all things considered. So anyway, yes, this is a uh, head cheese mold. So, I mean, we've seen these on eBay, and they often are spray painted. And in fact, that's how I managed to score this one. I got this up for a reasonable uh, deal on eBay, I thought. I I think I paid $30 for it, and it had been uh, painted, in fact, but I soaked it in the lye tank for, oh, I don't know, at least a month or two, and uh, that took uh, the paint all the way off, and uh, I have uh, since uh, seasoned it. And yes, of course, I did test it for lead. And just as importantly, uh, I'm actually not going to be putting bare food in this thing because when, um, because before I act, once the uh, from once the uh, head cheese or brawn is ready to go into this thing, I'm going to line this with some simple plastic wrap first. That way we can be sure after it chills, it'll come out of the oven. Uh, oven. It'll come out of the pan without uh, falling apart. That's how, uh, again, if you see <clears throat> that video I did on head cheese, that's uh, how, you know, that's how I did it last time. And I see no reason not to do it the same way now. So anyway, yeah, this is a cast iron uh, head cheese mold. <laughs> um, I was thinking maybe of uh, doing a piece, in fact, on other unusual cast iron uh, pans and other pieces tonight. But let's see what we have here. Comments. Ah, yummy, says Julie LeBlanc. William Hurt, when I was around four years, when I was around four years old, Ma, Dad, and some neighbors raised two pigs for slaughter, and that was my first taste of hog's head cheese. I actually liked it and looking forward to this one. Hmm. Uh, yeah, only a little mess. I would have split I would have spilt that all over the kitchen. Yeah, that's my, was my worry. I was afraid that was exactly what was gonna happen, and I'm glad it turned out all right. <laughs> And as you can see, it looks like the uh, liquid is already starting to boil. So that's good. So give it, oh, I don't know, maybe half an hour or so. It should hopefully reduce because I've got this thing up um, to about, oh, almost six or so on my uh, electric stove. I don't want to get it too hot because this is still an enameled cast iron pot. And of course, I don't want to damage the enamel. <laughs> um <clears throat> 
Christina J, my first live stream. Congratulations. I've never tried head cheese. Now you have me curious. Oh, good. Because the best I could say is that if you have the opportunity, do try this yourself. I am not guaranteeing you will like it. I am being completely honest here. It may not be for everyone's taste, but there's no reason why you can't try it. And then that way you can at least say, yes, I tried it. <laughs> that, as I think I've said enough times before, that's been my mantra for like about the last 10 years or so. Pretty much I find myself, if, I'm, if I say I've never tried this before, then I have to try it. And that has introduced me to a lot of really delicious foods, including head cheese. Um, the head cheese I bought and actually did not uh, really enjoy that much actually came from a wonderful meat market in Pennsylvania, northern Pennsylvania. And anybody in that area probably knows about Dietrich's uh, Meat Market. Wonderful, wonderful place. And I highly recommend going there. And in fact, you might like their head cheese better than I, better than I did. All, all, just about all of their other stuff I absolutely adored. And, and it is a must stop. It's just, well, the one they made just did not seem to appeal to my palate. <laughs> Um, while we're saying this, Papa Dan, video is streaming great tonight. Oh, good. Yeah, I believe you said you had some trouble last week. So, <laughs> uh, Danny Gaspar, being from Louisiana, I heat, I eat head cheese slices with mayo and saltine crackers. Spicy head cheese is awesome. Oh, yeah. And that's why we're kicking on the spices here. Um, not so much your Cajun spices, you know. I'm really not drowning this in, like, in uh, hot peppers or uh, or sauce or anything like that. I'm using your traditional spices. You know, we're talking like uh, basil, thyme, uh, black peppercorns, and a fair amount of vinegar, apple cider vinegar, um, red wine vinegar. That that really helps kick this up a notch, I think. So, but that's just to my tastes. And Red Dog, I remember when I was a small kid, my dad chasing me around the house with two bloody hog eyes on his fingers, and, and it was, and I was terrified. Yeah, I'll bet you were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's definitely the type of thing my dad probably would have pulled on us if he'd had the opportunity. <laughs> uh, Louisiana here, well, a lot of people here from down south, it seems like. Well, and well, I'm. As you can see, this Yankee has had something uh, of an education. I mean, I love our uh, Yan I love our northern foods here. I mean, I've gone on and on about our Boston baked beans, and that is something I still have to do on these uh, on this live video as well. We're going to do some Boston baked beans in the very near future. I promise you that. But I've learned a lot about southern cooking, and I've liked a lot of of uh, what I've seen. One of which would be this. Uh, head cheese here, or soon to be head cheese. I think if I just uh, spread it out. Oh, by the way, you see, it's that tender that it's just uh, falling apart. So that's probably the first thing I can do. Um, get this out of the way, more or less. And I can probably start splitting this apart. Yeah, because that's really all you have to do is like, as I said, I just boiled this for uh, five or six hours. The recipe is on my website, and I have a link to that as well. Um, namely, that I put in your basic mirepoix vegetables. You can see in there the usual carrots, uh, onions, celery, a couple of bay, a few bay leaves in there. You know the usual stuff, aromatics, and they actually help give this a really nice flavor. In that, as it was boiling, no, the uh, kitchen did not smell like uh, just boiling meat. The aromatics really gave it a nice uh, aroma, one that uh, I certainly enjoyed. Anyway. As I, and besides, this is, oh, gee, I'm not even going to get into uh, what we have here. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying not to be gross, I promise. But um, <clears throat> essentially, we're just going to pick the meat from the bones. And really what we have to do is sort through this and essentially put the edible stuff on one bowl and the inedible stuff in another bowl. It's really picking through it piece by piece and asking myself, can I eat that? And if the answer is yes, then it goes into one bowl. But anyway, the nice thing about slow cooking as well is that, again, it just simply 
falls off the bone. And it's really, again, this really is not so disgusting when you see it that way. I mean, this is quite frankly, just that, you know, it's a bone where the meat has fallen off. So I promise I will not go into uh, gory detail over that because you can see the gory details as it is. While I'm at it, I might as well start. I know where I just had it. Oh yeah, here it is. Here's the other bowl. Uh, that. There we go. And this would be our first piece. That is the uh, discard bowl. What we have here is the one that will not be discarded. Get a couple of pieces, get off of here. Let's take a look, see what we have, like that and that. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of that and I might as well use my fingers too. Cause yeah, it's still hot. I don't wanna burn myself, but I'm gonna try my best to ensure you know, that I get as much edible meat out of this as possible. And that, and nice thing is, again, when it's slow cooked, it's really easy, in most cases, to separate the meat from the bones. It's because it just falls off in most instances. Look, here's another bone. This really isn't so, so bad. Ooh, other than that, yeah, it is still hot. I'm doing this while it's still hot because I'm trying to uh, get this done quickly so as not to bore you folks. Anyway, we've got the big pieces here that are coming off easily. Oh, look, teeth. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point I'm probably reported for this. Well, tough tushies because, you know, as I said, this, I mean, this, um, this came from a uh, butcher shop. It had been killed for this reason. And it's really no different, quite frankly, than uh, picking apart any other uh, carcass, of which there are many videos of that kind on YouTube. Oh, 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 oh yeah, look, it's Mortimer Snurd. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, also, it doesn't look, doesn't look so bad when it all comes apart. Okay, a couple of other pieces. I'm going to have to get rid of things like these carrots and pieces of onion. Some of it I might just leave in. Oh, yeah, there's, there we go. That's a whole part of the jowl that came off. Hog jowls. And as people will tell you, hog jowls can actually be pretty tasty. And look, the meat came right off, too. As I said, that, that really wasn't so bad, was it? I know I keep saying that, but, well, that's really what I'm going to be hearing uh, in the comments of this video. I have little doubt about that. Likewise, the one on Facebook. Um, Facebook, at least I know I'm pretty much safe, simply because Facebook doesn't give a crap. Um, you know, I mean, I have reported a lot of really hateful things on Facebook. You know, we're talking like racists. Uh, white supremacists, uh, people endangering other people's lives, you know, anti-vaccine morons, that kind of thing. I have reported those kind of pages to Facebook many, many times. Every single time Facebook has given me the reply, oh, we're sorry, this does, not, this does not violate our community standards, but thank you very much for letting us know. Uh-huh. <clears throat> yeah. So it's okay for the, for the racists to be there on Facebook. In fact, um, interestingly enough, I, I won't get into politics. I'll just say very quickly. Yeah, you know how recently, because of all the politics over <coughs> QAnon, um, Facebook actually did put a policy in and, um, and has been booting off a lot of uh, sites that have actually promoted QAnon. That's only, really only because they're putting on a public show and... And I'm being completely honest about that. Facebook really doesn't care about anything except for revenue. Right now, they just know that they have to put on a public show by booting out uh, the QAnon uh, conspiracy um, nut jobs, unfortunately. That's the reason why they're booting them out. Not because they're dangerous. Not because people's lives have been uh, put in danger. I mean, after all, you, you remember things like Pizzagate, where they actually shot 
at a pizza place in Washington, D.C. But hey, no, that's not the reason why Facebook's uh, kicking them out. They're kicking them out because they are because it's politically correct to do so. And that's all I'm going to say about that now. Let's say, let me change the subject back. Back to something more enjoyable, like shredding apart pork. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for uh, putting up with my little rant there. I'm doing my best to keep politics of that kind out of my uh, Facebook group, which is um, and my Facebook page and also my YouTube channel. Sometimes it creeps in because it's inevitable and because I am a uh, human being like anybody else. I have my own opinions. I like to think that I'm a moral person. And what's this? It's a bay leaf. It's starting to get cooler at this point. I may be able to get into this with my hands. This is actually not looking too bad at this point, though, I would, I would have to say. Let me try to bring this a little bit closer, in fact. This is actually not looking so bad right now, if you ask me. This really just looks more like a, a pot of uh, pulled pork more than anything else. You know, I mean, after all, there's really all, practically nothing left to identify this as a pig head. This, for instance, probably came from the ham hock. So that's not so bad. We just uh, get rid of the insides, or keep the insides, rather. And the fatty part, we can put aside and discard it. And this is pretty much how they uh, did head cheese in the old days. They literally sort through it and ask, can I eat that? Of course, in the old days, it was the answer was almost always yes. <laughs> I mean, we, are, in general, our tastes are a lot more timid in general these days than they used to be. Even those of us who say we have cast iron stomachs. And that could very well be another kind of subject. Is this like cartilage? Yes, it is. That goes. This is a bay leaf that goes. Um, let's see what else we have. I've got these little pieces of carrot in here as well that I need to fish out. You know, it's safe enough. I probably could eat the eat those parts, like the carrot and the um, celery in here. You know, because, yeah, it's just mush, but, hey, it still has flavor to it. What flavor hasn't been imparted into the pork, that is. And anyway, once we're done sorting this, then we get to the fun part, which is adding the spices. So I, I'm hoping this, as always, I hope this isn't too boring, but essentially this is how we make head cheese. As you can see, there's really nothing mysterious about it. And for the most part, it really isn't even that, um, you know, nauseating. Uh, probably the most nauseating part is finding still the little pieces of bone that we have to take out and discard. Like this one, for instance. This, I think, came from the ham hock. So, uh, we're not doing too badly here. And from all of that, I'd say at this point, oh man, we probably have more than a pound, maybe even two pounds of, uh, of uh, edible food here. So that's not doing too badly at all, considering the cost of the... Um, the cost of that uh, pig head. For the record, I paid about somewhere between eight and nine dollars for that pig head, which, from what I gather, was not a bad price. So that means we're talking like almost uh, four fifty a pound these days. Really, especially given the cost of meat these days, I don't think that's too badly, especially since we've made this ourselves, and you know, this is a lot more fresh and probably better than uh, what you typically would pay four fifty a pound for at oops at the supermarket. What's this piece here? Um, okay, there we go. Just put this apart. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Sh oh yeah, that's just shredded pork. Okay, I'm definitely gonna have to take a fork to this when I'm done sorting it and shred it up even more. However, at this point. Let's see, we've got, uh, well, there's still some pieces of fat I want to get rid of, like that one. I think I see a little bone in here. As I said, I'm going to get my hands dirty, and then I'll wash my hands in just a little bit. 
bay leaf, carrot. Yeah, it's getting cool enough at this point that I can actually can sort through it with my hands. So that may help to go a little bit faster because I can pull out these uh, pieces of bone here. Hmm. So when you joined this channel, did you expect to see me rooting through, um, you know, a whole bunch of uh, <laughs> pig guts like this with my hands? <laughs> and I hope you find it funny. I'm actually enjoying myself, quite frankly. That is, as long as I'm not burning my hands on this. You know, it is still, it is still steaming, but... I'm doing my best to get this done quickly, and the reason why I'm talking nonstop is again so that I don't bore you, so that you don't, so that you have something else to concentrate on besides me just rooting through these uh, bits of bits and pieces of meat with my hands. Feel a piece of bone in here. Here we are. Bone comes up easily, so at least we know this part's done. I can definitely say this is not undercooked. Meanwhile, over in the pot, the um, looks like the um, liquid is uh, boiling nicely. So we are going to have a, a nice base to, or binder, I should say, for this when it's uh, all done. And looks like a piece of fat here. And, and we may be close to the point where I can just uh, shred the rest of it with a fork. So let me uh, wash my hands and then let me check your comments again. I've been standing with my back to the uh, laptop so I can't see your comments. Got to catch up on those. Really the uh, comments, as Michael Jackson says, I'm just here to read the comments. Or as the guy from Ghostbuster says, I looked at the comments, Ray. <clears throat> All right, let's see what we have here. Hi there, Miss French Twist. That was a great price for the pig head. Yeah, I thought so. I knew I, I couldn't resist that. I'm happy unmarked. It has nine in relief and this dot nine in. If it's nine in, then it may be a uh, BSR. Uh, oh, wait a second. Half circle on the lip. Oh, yeah, Raymond, I saw your comment last week, and I did comment on it. The nine spider here, I'm not so sure that it's a, it's a, a BSR, especially if it has a gate mark on it. Also, that little half circle on there, I think that's actually a break. Um, mean, because, um, over the years, a lot of people would use things like pliers or channel locks to lift the lid when it was hot. And that could actually cause the uh, lip to break so that it looks like there are little bite marks taken out of the hood, uh, out of the lid there. And I'm sorry to say that, but that is, well, the truth. Uh, no gate mark. Okay. Well, yeah, um, if that's the case, um, well, yeah, please, uh, yeah, if you can make any pictures, please go ahead and post them to my uh, Facebook, like my Facebook page, like always. Uh, Andrew Bonificio, watching you and Doctor Who at the same time. Well, that should be interesting. Hi. Uh, yeah, Jamie is out right now, and I'm just reassuring her that really the nauseating part is over with. <laughs> She's disagreeing with me on that. <laughs> uh, Roddy Campbell says, my, mother, my mom's mother used to make hog's head cheese, but she used two heads, and I loved eating it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Most are going... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Jamie, meanwhile, uh, she made her own dish today that had nothing to do with pork. She made some more of that Christmas crack that we made. Well... What else can we call it? Crackle. Oh, crackle. Okay, crackle. Well, I don't know. Considering the fact that we're both addicted to it and that once it, that it's the third tray that we've made, I'm thinking maybe crack may very well uh, be appropriate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're still working on that. And besides, we're just going to have to make it again then. Gosh darn it. CHF, Chicago Hardware Foundry. What about a Chicago Hardware Foundry? Well, I guess we'd have to see some uh, comments, um, some pictures of that. Paw Paw Dan, I wouldn't worry about offending anyone with tonight's cooking of head cheese. They, they could change channels if this, effect, if this offended them. Enjoy your rambling on. Yeah. <laughs> no, but thank you very much for looking after the cats. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You're saying to me, oh, I can't change the channels. <laughs> uh, oh, gee, somebody. Meanwhile, it looks like a comment has been uh, blocked in which somebody is telling me, stick to pots and pans, a-hole. Well, guess what? Your comment's been uh, blocked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. People, yeah, people suck. <laughs> Mortimer Snurd, using that name tells your age. Yeah, I am over 50, I will admit that. And yet, actually, Mortimer Snurd was still before my time. However, I have seen, I have seen classic TV, so... Sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. No, I understand. That's okay. What you're hearing is, is just the refrigerator right now. Jamie's, yeah, left, Jamie left the door open for... Yeah, nothing, nothing too bad. I uh, had cheese. Um, yeah, Miss French Twist. We mainly had it on holidays. A little different. It's a real delicacy. Yeah. I... <laughs> so anyway, Les Bennett Jr., your fun rambling while cooking. Well, I'm glad you like it. I do that largely to help, you know, just that uh, people don't like dead spots, you know, silent moments on these kind of things. And so I do my best to try to fill it in. Um, I just speak from the cuff, like a stream of consciousness type of thing. And if people like it, well, I'm very, very uh, flattered with that. Meanwhile, at this point, this is definitely cooled off. So I can uh, start forking it up. Oh, exactly. That's you know? that's the whole point. If you if don't you like, like it, it, you don't have to watch it. If you like the pots and pans videos, then mm -hmm. watch those. This is, as you can see, this is exactly what you do with a pulled pork. All you do is just take a couple of forks and shred it apart. There's really nothing to it. And at this point, there's really no difference between this and your typical pulled pork. The consistency is a little different, yes, because this is boiled meat rather than braised or slow-cooked meat. So, yeah, it um, does feel a little slimy. I will admit that. Nonetheless, we are about to get into the really fun part, and that's mixing in the spices. <laughs> That's uh, this. I think this is a piece of cartilage. So that goes out. But as I said, I mean, at this point, really, again, what is the difference at this point between this and a pulled pork? I mean, after all, it is just pork. Just came from a different part of the pig. That's all. And anyway, if you're talking a different part of the pig, I mean, hey, people like the uh, shoulder versus, say, uh, the loin. Oh bay leaf okay so still keep searching through this for any bits like that need to be shredded or thrown out also for the record i am not just going to stick to pots and pans because the truth is i've really got into this first and foremost i started this channel for the cooking I fell in love with cooking, and it just so happened to be cooking with cast iron, which I do not regret, not to this day. But for me, it has really been the cooking even more than the cast iron. It's really been the cooking more than anything else. Just like I have that big cast iron collection, and I do my best to use it as much as possible, which is another good reason to have this channel. It gives me an excuse to bring out pieces like that, like that uh, hog head mo cheese mold, for instance. So, I mean, I like a lot of those other channels out there. I mean, I'm sure you've seen um, Cast Iron Cookware, who's now selling his own uh, his own brand of, uh, uh, not Buzzy Wax, but his own, uh, oh yeah, Easy Beasy Cast Iron Cooking uh, Seasoning. And I'm sure you've seen The Culinary Fanatic, who's a friend of mine. You've probably seen, um, what's her name, Le Lady Liberty Stacker. There are a few other brand new channels out there as well that are starting up devoted to cast iron cooking. There's this guy who has a uh, live uh, YouTube podcast every week. He calls himself Mr. Cast Iron. I dropped by his uh, place, his uh, channel the other day and, um, and the like. A lot of these sites, I have to say, really seem to do more with uh, 
collecting cast iron, restoring cast iron, and your basic cooking, which is not, now there's nothing wrong with basic cooking. I mean, I mean, let's try it this way. If you go on to uh, YouTube and you just do a search based on the newest videos, not the most popular, but the newest videos, and you search for cast iron, which I like doing just about every day, what you usually see these days is uh, a lot of people in India now doing unboxing videos, which basically means taking a cast iron pan out of the box, or people making all of the usual stuff in cast iron, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm never going to get tired of seeing videos of cornbread, scrambled eggs, um, steak, uh, biscuits and gravy, you know, the things that everybody makes in cast iron. I like to think I've uh, gone out of the way to make things in cast iron that are a little unusual, like hoghead cheese, for instance, or that big pot of jambalaya, or well, the uh, meat pie we did last week, for instance. I like trying these new things, and all that is really, I find, to be really fascinating, and this is what I've dedicated my channel to, as I said, to the cooking as much as the cast iron. So that's why we're, you're not, I'm not just going to stick to pots and pans. I'm going to keep doing things like this. There. And with that, I feel like we are about ready to go to the next step, which means I can take out the strainer now. Ooh, there's a little bit more liquid in here, in fact, that I was able to strain out. Don't go. Oh, damn it. There it goes. Who was it who said all over the kitchen? Ah, oh, well. Let me try it another way. Move this. That's good. Let's try again. Put this on here. A little bit more liquid strained out of it. And now that we've done that, let's put this back in. Plop. So all told, as I said, I probably have at least a couple of pounds of, of really boiled pork at this point which is not a bad deal at all, because now, as I said, finally, finally, got to wipe all this off, but finally, it's time for the spices. Ah, uh, cool, as they say, or somebody says here, uh, the Germans call cheese press style. Yes, indeed, because uh, the culinary posts a lot on Instagram. Well, yes, he does. He has his own, his own Instagram um, use mine every day, use cast iron every day. And oh yeah. And yes, that's true. The culinary fanatic, um, I'm still in touch with him regularly. We exchange uh, Christmas presents and other things. And he says he is getting back into cooking. So I'm thinking that we will be seeing more from uh, his channel very soon. The best I can say is keep an eye on it. However, now, as I said, Finally, it's time to get down to the spices. And here's the thing about head cheese. Don't skimp on the spices. Use lots of spices. And I'm not kidding. I found the more spices I put into this, the better it was. Which is why, again, the recipe that I'm using is there on my uh, website. And I encourage you to click on it. Um, right now, for instance, I've got the uh, dry spices which uh, we've got a whole bunch of things in here, like onion powder, garlic powder, kosher salt, black pepper, smoked paprika, um, some ground mustard, you know, all the usual stuff that you would put in with pork. So let's put that in. In addition, also got some other spices that I need to grind up a little bit more, some dried up Parsley, thyme, oregano, a few black peppercorns. So let's take a moment where I put, there it is, and uh, grind this up because it won't take long. I do have a spice grinder. I really never use it. 
because I enjoy doing this. This mortar and pestle here was a Christmas gift from one of my co-workers. Good grief, something like about nine years or so ago. I'm betting he re-gifted it. He probably got this as a uh, Christmas gift, had no idea what to do with it, and he gave it to me because, you know, I like cooking, which is fine. Got myself a nice mortar and pestle for free that way. Uh, grind me kangaroo down, sport. Grind me kangaroo down. There we go. This may be enough. I mean, yeah, it still has pieces, but it's uh, it's still uh, pretty fine at this point, and I don't want to take forever doing this either. So we get to throw in these spices. More spices, that is. So now we can move this back to the front. As you can see, we got a lot of spices here already. <laughs> and now for the third set of spices, which is the liquids. Oh, yeah, no, on top of all that, we've even got about a quarter cup of parsley, too. Because you can never have too much parsley, it seems like. But now from here, we go to the liquids. Several tablespoons of... Lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, red wine vinegar. Um, I think that's all the liquid I'm using here at this moment. But basically, the idea is use lots of spices and use your favorite spices. You do not have to follow my recipe to the letter. Use your favorite spices that you like using on pork. If you like using jalapenos, put them in or red peppers, or ghost peppers. If you like that in pork, then go ahead and put it in. Or, or maybe mix it in with Old Bay, or no, sorry, Zatarans, for instance. And in it goes. Now that we've done that, we get to mix it all together. because it's really not that hard, as you can see. All I did was boil it all until it falls apart, sort the edible stuff from the inedible stuff, mix in a whole bunch of spices with it. And that's really about it. We are now ready to mold up some head cheese. Oh, one second. Um, do I see? No, that's okay. I'm, why am I thinking I'm still feeling a little hard piece in here? Pardon me. Not seeing it. Okay. Well, in that case, then, there's one one thing I have to do now. Sniff it. Oh, man. Oh, I'm not making that up either. Oh, man, does this smell good. Yeah. Okay, I've got to, I've got to sample it. Yes, it really does taste, smell that good. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, 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 oh man, is this good? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, really wish you could smell this. It smells awesome. Oh, okay, a little piece of fat. I admit that. That'll go. But mm, it smells awesome. This tastes awesome. I am so looking forward to this because now all we have to do at this point. Is bring out the mold and it's as easy as that let me clean this off a little bit since i since i did spill this a little earlier actually i can move this out of the way now because as i said these are parts that are going to be discarded and by doing that we now have a lot more room Especially if I move this out of the way, too, the mortar and pestle. There we go. As always, I appreciate your patience with this, folks, but that's the consequences of doing this thing live and not being a professional. Get out a paper towel. Wipe this down. 
And then we will be ready to make ourselves some head cheese. Turn off the uh, stove top at this point, because I can only hope that the liquid has uh, reduced a little bit. And there we go. Now, finally, we get to bring out the pig head, the cast iron head cheese mold. It is possible to just simply pack it into this thing, but of course we want it to retain its shape, and that's why it's actually a good idea to line this thing with foil, or rather, I'm sorry, plastic wrap. Yeah, I bet you could use foil too if you wanted to, but I'm gonna be using plastic wrap here. And we don't want to skimp on it because it's going to fill every crevice here. So I'm going to double it up. Put a second layer going at a right angle. A little bit more than that, in fact. Because again, the liquid and the weight of the meat are going to press down on this so that it will actually fit the shape of the mold. But there we go. So that pretty much covers it, which means now all we have to do is start filling it up. There we go. The microphone is right next to this, so I'm getting, I'm betting you can probably hear some interesting sounds as this goes into the uh, pan here. Do I see an extra bay leaf in here? Okay, well, get rid of that then. So it goes. Okay. Anyway, since this is not going to rise, you know, it's not like we're baking a cake here. We can uh, stuff this thing up as high as we want. Because what we're going to do after this is pour in some of the reduced liquid. And that will be the binder. It will, it will congeal in the refrigerator overnight so that tomorrow morning this uh, head cheese will be ready. And yeah, like I've done with each of these videos, I will show you the finished product. So, the last time I used a much bigger pig head, and so I had a lot more of it, enough to fill, fill two pans, but this one I think we'll do fine with one, especially since there is a little bit, a little bit left over, and I'm just going to eat this as is, because, oh, man, oh, the smell of this is like, oh, <laughs> uh-oh, kitty in the kitchen, I hope he doesn't jump on the keyboard. Yep, he did. That's what just, I was wondering what hit my foot, and it was him. That's all right. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's his other nickname? Yeah. Asshole. yeah. <laughs> Take your pick. But anyway. So. Okay, so anyway, we are almost done here at this point. As I said, all we have to do now is use some of the uh, cooking liquid. It already has a film on top as well. And we just put this in carefully. Oh, I hope he gets in there. Oh, I hope he does. Oh, oh, you think he's gonna fall in that no, I thing? No, I hope he does. <laughs> I hate to wish a boy, you know? Yeah, I know. It's just to teach him a lesson, you know? An extra waste basket. Yeah, if he falls in it, well, he won't be hurt or anything. No, I just hope he does. He just, you know, so he learns, like, mm -hmm. don't be stupid. So anyway, we just let this soak in. And then from here... There's nothing in it, weirdo. We just cover it up with a wrap. carefully so that it doesn't I think some of it may have come out. Well, that's all right. The important thing is that there we go. 
And it's really as easy as that. Actually, what I should do is put one more piece of wrap over the top. So that that way we can press it down carefully. But anyway, that's it. That's really all that needs to be done because at this point, now I'm going to put this uh, pan in the oven. Uh, oven <laughs> in the refrigerator. I can't believe I said that. Oh, yeah. I guess I should say one other thing because that's another question that does come up once in a while. Can you put a cast iron pan in the refrigerator? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Um, that's one reason why I use the plastic wrap because, again, most of the liquid and the uh, meat is not directly contacting the metal here. So it is not going to rust overnight. I've done this before. That means, yes, I can take this whole thing and put it in the uh, refrigerator. And by tomorrow morning, we will have hoghead cheese. Just in time for the new year, in fact. Okay, let's see. Having said that, uh, Jessica T, can't wait for it to see how it turns out. Yeah, me either. Looks like we have another spammer in either Russian or Greek, but uh, we're hiding that. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah, trouble just started uh, poking around with the cords. You wanted to say hi? Well, I was just saying hi. Sorry, I've been uh, non existent. No, that's all right. For today. Um, <laughs> yeah. With all understanding why. Um, you know, just can't get that image out of my head from today. <laughs> it was so little. Uh, I will it was not. So cute. <laughs> no, except for no, it gross wasn't. Eyeball. Yeah, I know it wasn't. Well, you could picture when I. Was yeah. <laughs> well. But the noise that I had to hear. Yes. Well, I will reassure you again. I am. Do not force this on anybody. Yeah. I mean, as I said, I still feel that. You know, if you were to try it, I think you would like it, but I'm not going to force you to well, you try know it. My stomach. I get squeamish about stuff. Like I can't even eat like chicken thighs, like on chicken on the bone. Cause if I start thinking about what it is, like what I'm actually doing, like what I'm actually eating, mm -hmm. um, I get Eric can can tell you. I uh yeah, I, I can't do it, I can't eat it. Mm-hmm. I, I yep. Yeah. That's okay. So, yeah. So I just want to say hi to everybody. Hi, and Happy New Year. I, I can't, you know, my fans, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> Raymond says, almost wanted to set some aside some pig for a pulled pork sandwich. Well, I do have a little bit extra, and you better believe I'm going to be chowing done on that, done on that. Oh, man. Hmm. Uh, Papa Dan, yesterday I found a dead feral hog that looked uh, somebody killed on my aunt's place. Uh, they only took the head. Wonder if they made cheese, left the rest to rot. Well... What a waste of pork. I'm sorry to hear that. Hmm. You, you, sorry? Show, you, you still have some barbecue sauce. You should show them at least the barbecue sauce. The barbecue sauce? Oh, okay. 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 All right, if you'd like. No, I'm saying you, you know, because we're talking about pulled pork, you should show them. Oh, okay. Oh, it's, okay. It's close. No. Sweet baby Grace, I've got nothing on Eric Walker. Uh, okay, I guess. Yeah. Uh, a few days ago, I made my own uh, private barbecue sauce to... Uh, for uh, Jamie, yeah, and this and this is uh, the rest of it. She's been uh, really helping herself to it, which is fine. The barbecue sauce that I mean, everybody has their own special barbecue sauce. Mine happens to be based on my uh, Boston baked beans recipe. It makes a pretty good barbecue sauce on its own, but hmm. yeah. But nonetheless, I'd say at this point we're getting to it because. You know, I mean, it has been about an hour or so, and, and I've uh, done what we wanted to. <laughs> so, I'm um, just double-checking the comments here. Miss French Twist, it will be better after a few days when the seasonings have gone through it. Yeah, I know. I'm going to let that rest in the uh, uh, refrigerator at least overnight. <laughs> Boiler Honky Dude said, I had a 30-gallon rendering cauldron welded. Took the old fellow several weeks to figure out how to heat it. I wanted to watch, but he said the price would then be 50 times, and he did it as a challenge. Well, I hope it turned out well. And, yeah, please get some use, to, get some, uh, use out of it. <laughs> I think you could make a cake if you spray the pan really well. I actually, a couple of times, have made cornbread in that uh, cast iron pig head. I mean, it's not, I mean, they made it for hog head cheese, but really, you can cook anything in it. Yeah, so a pretty scary... Uh, pig cake, for instance. Oh, okay. So it seems like uh, she wants to use that pig head mold to uh, make a birthday cake for her son. 
I'm up for it. <laughs> and Dan Gaspard, it can be repaired. Oh, is uh, Keith Brookshire, is a young pig better than an older one for this? You know, I am not as much of an expert to be able to say that. I do know that really for pretty much any cut of meat, they do seem to prefer the young, young because I don't know, maybe it's not as old. <laughs> I mean, that's why, that's why, yeah, a lot more tender when it's young, as she says. I mean, after all, you know, veal comes from young um, calves and they prefer young lambs. And so I would think that a young pig probably makes even better uh, head cheese. So, yeah, I am definitely looking forward to that. Uh, somebody was saying something about um, welding cast iron is a lost art. Okay. Um, so, yes, I apologize. I seem to miss it in the uh, comments here. I guess somebody mentioned a uh, cracked cast iron pan. Boiler hunky dude. Meanwhile, that is, this is a great use of cast iron in, the, in this age. Unusual. Great lesson for getting all, them all their food in portion bags. Yeah. Well, well, what can I say? It's like, again, I enjoy the cooking. It's really not much more I can say at this point. And to be honest, I don't think there's really much else we could say here. I mean, after all, again, we're, it's uh, been over an hour at this point. I've done what we wanted to do, and I have to put this in the refrigerator. And just as important, tomorrow is, of course, New Year's Eve. So let's, okay, let's uh, get back. And I guess I will say uh, a nice, try to say a goodbye to everyone for tonight <laughs> before the cat uh, pulls the cord out again. <laughs> he's looking back and forth. He isn't sure whether he wants to do the cord or come to you. He's coming. He's coming to you. That's nice. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, tomorrow is New Year's Eve. Finally. I mean, everybody, <laughs> I know something has happened in 2020 to everybody that you really do not want to repeat. And yeah, it happened to me too. So, but I'm not even going to get into that. Um, well, no, I told you already, you know, my mom passed away, not from COVID, but, uh, you know, she, she actually died from uh, lung cancer. So, uh, yeah, I miss her, <laughs> but well, life goes on and it does happen to everyone. And I'm remembering her. I remembered her at Thanksgiving, Christmas. I will remember her tomorrow. I will remember her forever. But other than that, again, this blankety blank year is finally gonna be over wash away the old and welcome in the new and boy am i ever looking forward to it <laughs> 2021 is going to be an adventure for a lot of people and well let's just brace ourselves and get to it and really that's about all we can say at this point give the cat a hog bone <laughs> maybe i should <laughs> Ever make a po uh, poiki in your poiki pot? Um, I did a couple of times. Yes, that is probably something I really should do. We should do a full-blown poiki cost, a poji cost. Oh, yeah, they pronounce it poiki, actually, which is, quite frankly, the ritual of poiki cost is everybody stands around the poiki as it slow cooks and drinks beer and has a good time. That is really what you do. But that's going to come another time. So as Jessica T says, Happy New Year. Thank you, everybody, for showing up once again. And I'm very much, as always, I really, really appreciate everybody here. And, and I really hope you enjoy it. So I think if anything, we can uh, use 2020 as a, a learning experience um, <laughs> that, that people actually um, can be compassionate about their neighbors. You hear so many stories now that you that kind of had gone by the wayside about neighbors helping neighbors and, and just going out of their way to do stuff for people because, you know, frankly, people need it. Um, but, you know, you just, you hear of tremendous stories now. Um, and, you know, I've learned that 2020 taught me that I'm, I'm a badass. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cause the, the, Eric can contest to this. The amount of stuff that I've been through this year is just yeah, yeah a lot of stuff health wise and, and, you know, family wise and, and everything, but, but um, you're I've still up and kicking, you know what I yes, mean? You have. I've made it and congratulations. Um, and uh, I owe a lot of, you know, my keeping sane to this man here, oh. um, level headed, great, you know, oh. um, and, you know, so oh. if anything, 
try to remember the good that we all learned that um, humanity does still exist, mm -hmm. surprisingly enough. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that we're all strong and, uh, you know, we could always, you know, as this year taught us with people doing good things for each other is that everybody is capable of doing better yeah. and being better. And we'll do, we'll do what yeah. we can. Yep. And then just because next year, even though this, this pandemic might be gone, um, don't use that as a reason to stop, you know, doing what you can for neighbors, because imagine how great society will be and how great will be if, if people are helping out people when they're <laughs> not in dire straits, keeping the cat off the keyboard, you know? So if people are helping people in, in just regular life and not because they're in dire straits, it, Wow. Yeah. Just imagine the possibilities. So happy new year, everybody. Happy new year. And happy new year to all of you too. And again, what can I say now, but thank you everybody for watching. Enjoy your uh, new year. Enjoy your new year's cooking. And we will once again, see you all next Wednesday. Next have, video. <laughs> have a good night. We're done. All right. <laughs>